Aloha, everybody, and welcome to part two of Double Dragon Neon. And uh, I really like the gag with the world map here, because at first glance, you think you're just going to go directly to the right. But then we get into a rocket-powered space dojo, and so the line goes up, 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 all the way into outer space. <laughs> it reminds me of Mega Man 10 and the final Wily Castle stage. Man, he's gotta be around here somewhere. Ah, is this thing on? This rocket-powered space dojo will be your grave! <laughs> Williams, why were you so fascinated with that spike trap? Either way, you're dead. Williams, I'm docking your pay for this! So now that we're in a new stage, we have a bunch of new enemies to beat up on. So right off the bat, tiny robots, some gyroscopic jerks known as Hoverbizzle. Will you stop destroying my things? <laughs> no, Skullman again, never. I'll always destroy your monitors. But uh, these guys aren't really much of a threat. They're just tiny robots that occasionally spin their small metal legs at you that do very little damage. And the instant way to kill them is to grab them with the B button because you just immediately destroy them once you throw them. No matter what they hit, they'll explode in pieces after you throw them. They're not like other enemies where you have to punch them a whole bunch of times before they'll get stunned and then you can throw them. Like, you can't just throw anybody at any time. You can't just push the B button on Williams here until you punch him a bit, then he gets stunned and leans over, and then you can throw him. But with the robots, you can immediately grab them and destroy them right away. And some of them have dynamite on them, so you gotta be careful and watch out that they don't explode on you, you know? Switch out my fireball for the knee drop. There you go. Attention all geishas! Please report to the bridge to greet our guests! This wall looks awfully suspicious. That's because you can kick open the vent and go inside to find a hidden shop. A lot of first-time players are going to completely miss this shop. Rent is outrageous here! Tiny vent, but such big price! That skeleton man come in here like he owned the place! And those geisha? No respect for merchandise. <laughs> Why would you set up a shop here? Either way, the items in shops are always scripted. The Vent Space Dojo shop is always going to have Magic Gambit, uh, Desperation, Bomb Toss, Bro Dozer, etc. If I want to get Power Gambits, I know to go to Level 5's uh, shop. The music is so good! Oh my god, get the soundtrack! <laughs> and speaking of music, the theme song that's playing in Space Dojo 1 is a remix of Mission 2 from the original Double Dragon, so this song should sound awfully familiar. But anywho, folks, we got ourselves some new enemies, the Geishas. And the Geishas can actually be pretty annoying for first-time players. They might be one of the most annoying enemy types in the game. I don't find them too bad to deal with, but for casual people, it's going to be pretty frustrating. Because they like to teleport all over the place, right? Williams, I'm docking your pay for this! Y you went over this, Skull again. You went over this. Come on. This is coming out of Williams, sorry! All of them! Not all of them! Oh god! <laughs> but the geishas like to teleport all over the place, and what happens is, if you're right next to a geisha as soon as they teleport next to you, they will immediately try to swing for you, so you'll need to duck under to attack them, right? So I'm gonna come up to a geisha right now, I'm gonna duck under- Okay, maybe not. What the hell, Billy? You made me look like an idiot. <laughs> I'm gonna duck under, 
and then I'm going to attack her. And um, she throws these fans at you. She can throw them high so you can duck under them. She can also throw them low so that you'll need to jump over them. And you got to pay attention to that. The game can get pretty frantic and pretty busy when you're surrounded by a lot of Williams and the geishas are in the background doing their thing, ready to throw their fan at you, you know? People actually criticize the combat in this game as being really slow, but I don't think it's slow at all. I feel like there's always something going on. I, kn I gotta know when to duck under a baseball bat. I gotta know when to jump over these fans. I gotta beat up all of these people who are surrounding me at all times, and I think the combat is really, really awesome. I don't find this slow or clunky at all. I find this incredibly satisfying. So, you know, that's just me. Uh, I would recommend kicking the geishas if you don't have a weapon, because your kicks are stronger than your punches, and you don't want to punch them for them to teleport away, and then you have to get up close to them again, you know? So, when they're next to them, kick them, because your kicks are stronger than your punches. Don't tase me, bro! Actually, I think that might actually be a quote in the game. <laughs> I think Billy might actually say, don't tase me, bro. I could be wrong about that, but that seems like the kind of line he would say knowing this game. But uh, if you pay attention to the Skullmageddon TV monitors uh, before I shatter them, uh, there is an icon on the bottom right that is the Skullmageddon logo with the letters TV right next to it. And it looks so much like an MTV logo. It looks so much like the 80s MTV logo. And, uh, well, this game is just a big love letter to the 80s. I'm sure you've noticed. <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed from all the blue and pink and the mullets and the, the amazing mixtape music and uh, all of that stuff, but man, this game oozes the 80s and it, I just love it, because I'm a big fan of the 80s. I was only two years old when 1990 happened, so I don't know any personal... I don't have any personal experience with the decade, but you know, I love me some 80s music, I love me some 80s movies, I kind of wish I was alive during this period as a teenager. I mean, I was a baby, but I... It would have been interesting going through life as a teenager through all of this, but, you know. What could have been, what could have been. Hell yeah, air guitar! <laughs> Alright, so now we're in the airlock. This level can be quite treacherous. Make sure to hold your breath. the music's good. <laughs> so the bro dozer a technique that I just equipped. I don't actually use because I completely forgot to, but uh, when you push the attack button, your character will lunge forward doing this elbow attack, and if you have enough energy left in the magic meter, you can spam it again to just keep lunging, 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 and repeatedly hit people with this charge attack, which is pretty damn good, especially when you have lots of MP. Lots of electricity, you know? But either way, folks, we're in an airlock, and it tries to suck you in, and if it does, you'll lose a lot of health. You won't lose a life. You won't automatically have your entire health bar drained, but it does take away quite a bit of life, and it immediately kills enemies, so if you push them into it, they will die. And they'll just float in outer space. Oh, boy. Billy, you're a murderer. <laughs> I mean, they did steal my girlfriend, but still. Vacuum of space, I better hold my breath. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna spend this entire section holding his breath. It doesn't affect anything in gameplay, it's just, you know, we're outside in outer space. So obviously all you need to do is hold your breath and you'll be fine, right? <laughs> oh my god, this game is amazing. This game's so good. The geishas can be kind of annoying here when there's a big pit in the middle. I mean, the enemies run off themselves. <laughs> These idiots cartwheel right off. But uh, the geishas will not fall into the pit at all. They don't teleport onto it. They can't be knocked 
forward or backward. They always stay in place until they die. They're very sturdy, these geishas. They don't budge an inch. They don't budge an inch, but, uh... Again, my big tip is to just make sure that if they teleport next to you, duck in time. And uh, actually use their fans as weapons, because they're a throwing projectile weapon. You can throw it at people, and it actually accumulates numerous hits. It doesn't just hit them once. It will actually stay on them and go tsh -tsh 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 and do out a lot of damage. I'm sorry, I have to destroy these monitors. I have to. There is actually an achievement for doing so, so, uh, <laughs> if you're trying to get all the achievements in the game, destroy every monitor you see. Destroy them all. Anyway, with this airlock, we have a whole bunch of Lindas in black and red who all carry grenades. Oh, that, that's fun. And, of course, we got the hover bizzles with dynamite on them, so that's also fun. But, uh, every now and then the Lindas will throw some grenades at you, and you gotta dodge roll out of the way. I don't think I specified how to do a dodge roll. You push the, the duck button, and then you have to push a directional button to roll out of the way. So I duck, and then I push left and, or right in order to avoid stuff. There is sometimes an invincibility frame with the dodge roll, but not always, I find. I don't know. I, I have a lot of experience with it. I have dodged a lot of things successfully doing the dodge roll, but... Uh, it's all personal player experience, I suppose, but, uh, if you actually stun Linda before she can throw the grenade, then she will drop the grenade, and then you yourself can pick up that grenade to throw at other baddies. I'm holding on to a key at the moment, because I got one. Oh god! Whew! I almost lost that key. Jesus. But, uh, I need to hold on to this key so I can get it to a treasure chest, and, uh, you can still kick when you're holding a weapon. So, even though the key can't hurt people, Okay, that's not true. The key can actually kill people. This is true. But it does very, very, very tiny damage. Ah, what the fuck? This is the tapeworm. This creature shows up in, occasionally in a few levels, and it's not actually an enemy. It's not actually a boss that you have to defeat. It just goes right through the wall, and then every time you punch it, it drops cash, a mixtape, or possibly soda or batteries. So, you want to keep punching it, punching it, punching it, as long as it's there, to get a whole bunch of bonus items. And, uh, that's pretty damn swanky, pretty damn fun. I don't know what it is. It's an alien creature aboard this spaceship, you know? But, uh, <laughs> it's got items, so beat it up, beat it up. Don't live and let live. Live and punch it out. Wait, that, that is not an actual quote. That doesn't make sense at all. Live and punch it out? I'm tired. <laughs> it's like 12 in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm very, very tired. Uh, but yeah, the airlock levels... It's kind of like an elevator level, sort of. You're just waiting for all the enemies to die before you can go on and move out, but... Every enemy gets killed by being sucked into the vacuum of space. The Williams, the Lindas, the robots. And if Big Bad Abobo should show up, you can bet that he's gonna die from the airlock, too. Because even Abobo can't survive outer space. Abobo! <laughs> I really love the personality all of the henchmen have, because they all have the, like these unique lines to them. Linda is obviously the big BDSM dominatrix lady, so... <laughs> Time for some discipline! On your knees, please! And then when you kill her, she's like, Oh, yes! Because <laughs> she enjoys the pain, don't you know? Oh my god, this game's too much. This game is too much. Anyway, folks, we're coming up to the boss. That's a plasma screen! It's expensive! What? They've already gotten this far? You've got to be kicked! Deploy the mandroid! A mandroid, eh? Would you call him a robot master, maybe? Time to slay a dragon! Alrighty, folks, time to take on the mandroid, the mecha biker. And he's got this bike that does two things. It either races right across the screen and you can drop kick into him to deal out a whole bunch of damage, 
Or it's going to shoot its other side and shoot flames at you. And uh, I always fall for that all the time. If you hit it three times, it'll eventually short circuit and you'll have to keep whacking it with his gun there to get it back up again. But uh, yeah, I just wait for it to come to me. It, if it doesn't, move out of the way. And then I drop kick to deal some damage. And eventually this thing blows up and Mandroid here starts walking and shooting. Sorry, jump and shooting. I, wait, either way, he has a slide feature, and every time he jumps, he will immediately slide right after he lands. So watch out when he jumps. There it is. Mandroid here also has... Oh no, not a charge shot! Just don't be in the way, and <laughs> you'll be fine. He shoots pellet shots that you have to duck twice in order to dodge all of them. But uh, as long as you're gleaming, you'll be hunky-dory. He'll blow up in little sparkles and pew, pew, pew. Just like a familiar mega mandroid guy something. I don't know. But that's the Space Dojo, folks. I didn't know you was a load fairy robot. Better get on that bike. We'll find out where Billy's heading in part three. See you then.